Okay, we're back, and it's Comp 305. It's week 10, lesson 10, part 2. And um, last we left off in our, with our brave adventurers, we were creating our little uh, dungeon, our D&D level. <laughs> it actually reminds me a lot of, uh, if you ever make anything for D&D, like uh, some kind of map, if you guys ever played D&D or some other thing. If you did that, it's like doing this, but in 3D, right? Um, whereas normally I would draw by hand, you know, maps for the, for the uh, level. This is the same kind of deal. Okay, so we want to add some water now. I think this is a good place to add water. How do we do that? Um, well, there are some built-in water effects. If I click on uh, some of our imported assets and if I go to environment, notice that there is two. There are two things here. We have water and water basic. Let's look at water basic for a second. Uh, water basic has two prefabs. Um, that's under the environment, uh, in, the one we just in, uh, imported, the environment import. So water basic daytime and water basic nighttime. Okay, we want water basic daytime, and look what it looks like. It's like a really blue, right? So um, let's put this in there. So I'm gonna kind of drag and drop this water basic daytime. And what I wanna do is um, I want to uh, show you what it looks like by focusing in on the scene. So we're gonna focus in on the scene. It's way over there, <laughs> right? Yeah, of course it's gonna be. And then what I want to do is I want to kind of move this uh, so it's up and so we can see this thing, what it looks like in our scene. And I'm going to kind of turn it around. So there we go. Just rotate the scene around. And what I want to do is continue to um, I want to move this so that it's way over here, right? So I'm going to kind of zoom out and click on water and put this back and then kind of Move it over here really quickly and to the front. So that's the water and then zoom in on it again. And notice how it is is right here and it's kind of floating. So I'm gonna kind of put it down to the ground. So we wanna move this thing. It's like looking like a like a kind of a circle. Oh, we don't want to be in the ground. We want to be outside of the ground, right? And let's expand it by increasing the size. So we'll kind of do one of these and you know from the middle we'll expand the size of the, the water, so it's kind of quite big, like this. There we go, that's water basic for you, okay? Let's see what this looks like, all right? So it's water basic. Um, this looks okay. Like, I mean, if I was gonna look at this thing, it's kind of bluish, right? And it looks like this. So kind of a really cool water effect, uh, very basic. One thing it doesn't have is there's no splash, because we haven't programmed that, right? So there's no splashing um, and everything else. That's neat. I like it. I notice that it's very basic, and again, you can't see anything. It looks very dark. It's kind of cool. But um, again, there's no way to modify this. So if I was going to go in here and modify uh, the shape and everything else, you'd have to realign its uh, mesh. Right now, it's water basic plane. I have to change this mesh to something else. Okay, so that's one. I like water basic, and it's kind of cool from a, a performance perspective, but I think the really cooler one is the regular water one. And there's two, there's water and water four. Let's go just to water, right? Water, if I go to the prefabs, it says water pro daytime. This is professional, right? And what I want to do here is I want to pull this water pro into here. Here's water pro. And again, um, it's way over here. So I'm going to kind of click it and move it back into my scene so we can see it over here. Otherwise, we won't be able to see here, the water and just focus in on it. And it's buried, so let's bring it up. There it is. Same kind of shape. It's kind of a round, uh, you know, kind of a uh, circle actually, shape. This one actually uh, goes over the screen. It's really nice. So I'm going to make this a little larger, so I'm going to kind of scale it up. And this is, again, this is professional version, so if I kind of move it up a little bit. And uh, this is cool. Um, so let's kind of play this one and see what it looks like. So again, fall, and as I run, as you see, now there's a bit of really cool effects. That looks much nicer, right? So you see that there's a little bit. And this is what I want to use. I want to use this one. Now, if you notice, it kind of buries itself here. There's a bit of a sharp round, round line here, um, which is a problem. I don't, I don't think it's really that cool uh, to make it like that. And I want to make a different shape to it, right? Again, if I fire the gun, I still get the same effect. I'm not getting a water kind of impact because I haven't programmed that. Right? Everything I do, I got to program it to get different effects. Okay, so this is cool. But the, the circle doesn't do anything for me. I need to change this. So take a look. Mesh, where it says my mesh renderer. I want to change this mesh to something else. So I'm going to click on this little um, a target, and I'm going to choose plane. Now it's, it's a square like this. This is important because 
I want my my uh, um, my circle to be this way. And you know what? Remember, it's going to be underneath my level, right? So it can't be the same level as me. It's going to be underneath the regular level. So this is the regular level. Remember that that, that, that four and a half. It's got to be below that. Notice that right now it's at four and a half. Let's put it at four point four. Right, that's the level it's going to be at. And now from a, a size perspective, look how where it is. It's, that's not right, right? It's got to kind of, a, a kind of a, a line with the size of my grid because I want this water effect to come out, right? Now look what it is here. From a scale perspective, it's 36 by 36. I know that this is 50 by 50 in terms of scale. So let's move this to 50 by 50. So 50. We don't have to do a 50 by 50 because the other side is not going to be that low. And if I look at it from the top down, I can see that we're kind of off, right? This is what it looks like. I made that on, and all I've done is change my, um, you know, my uh, my plane, right? From uh, my mesh filter from uh, from a, a, a water to a plane. That's all I've done. Now I want to move this up a little bit <clears throat> to match the the size of my of my uh, um, you know terrain. Notice that I'm going to get a little bit of water effects over here. Take a look. Because this area here is a little lower. So I need to go in there and fix that by raising the mountains up here a little bit. Because I don't want water. I just want water here. Okay, two things I need to do. I need to focus in, right? And make sure that my water, as I kind of scroll in, is directly aligned with this. So I'm just going to go into ISO mode here. And so now what I want to do is I want to align my water right by um, when my water's my water is actually uh, you know selected I want to click V for vertex select and I want to drag this water so that the vertex matches the bottom left corner and the top right there so if I go kind of go up now and I kind of go to the top which is by selecting the hand tool and go to the top just to check the corners because so that way it's aligned so it doesn't look weird there it is so that's kind of off a little bit still and I'm going to kind of get this. You see that I'm a little bit off, but that's okay. I can always align this by using this uh, vertex select mode and kind of pulling it across here like this. So it's almost ident It's almost good. Again, let's just use the hand tool to move back to this side. If I align one side, bottom and top, I'll be happy. Not always possible, right? Because, I mean, I have to adjust the size of my terrain and everything else. That's important to do. Right? And you can see how big this thing is. Like, it's, like, it's, again... People say, like, I want to make kilometers of, of stuff, but, you know, the reality is there's a lot of work involved, right? Okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, we're not going to see a lot of effects there. This is where I have a problem. I have a problem with this part, which is over here. Notice how this part is a little bit low, and I'm getting some water in there. I don't want that. So this is good. This is why I put this in. So I could leave it there and have it as a beach, and then I'd have to put more sand and everything else. Or I can just raise it up so it's higher. And I think I'm going to raise it up there. So I'm just going to go to uh, Terrain. I'm going to go click on the raising and lowering. I'm going to choose this one, a little bit larger. I'm going to reduce my, my, uh, my brush to a little bit lower than this. And then what I want to do is just, you know, raise it up so that I get rid of that water effect altogether by adding in more mountainous areas in here, right? Otherwise, I'm going to have an area that I'm going to have water effects where I don't want them. I don't want mountain water there, right, or here, okay? But I do want water over here. Okay, and let's just go there and see. That's another thing I want to check. I want to check to see that over here that I don't have a bit of a steep drop. And so to check that, I'm going to go back to perspective mode, and I'm going to um, just uh, kind of you know, go up here like this and just um, move this around for a second and use my hand tool to kind of go in here and see what this looks like, right? Not bad. I mean, it, it kind of kind of go, goes up to the beach. There isn't any movement to the water right now. You notice that it just stays there like this. There's no, like, you know, it's not affected by, by wind or by any kind of tide. I haven't made that happen, right? Remember, this is a very simple water effect, like a lake more than anything else, right? Okay, um, let's run this thing to make sure how, how the actual player sees it, which is always very important. And I'm going to run there really quickly, so I'm going to kind of use a shift key and press my W key to run. It's also good to know where we're at with this, and then we'll add some 
uh, interesting in my previous work. Ooh, not a lot. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna just leap there like a Superman. And there's some other effects we can add in there uh, to reduce our jump. For example, I can add my multiplier, my gravity multiplier, to like you know to make it even more difficult. Okay, that's cool. So there's some. This is a little bit of a stream here. So that's where it is. I think I still should have. I mean, again, it looks more natural the way it's like wrapping, so it's not as even. But I think I could have done more work here to either to either raise or lower this area a little bit more. And I did it better in the first class. Um, again, as I come down the shore here, I probably could have added more. Now that I see where the um, where the water is, I could have added more sand and and pebbles and all that kind of stuff to make it more realistic. But this isn't bad. And if I look, if I actually was to go in here, you can see that I can go whoa right into the water because I'm really deep down here, right? Like I'm actually in the water. So how would I do water effects? Like you can't tell I'm actually in the water right now. And remember I told you this is kind of a bit of a drop, right? So if I come and come up, and then as I come up to the water level, there I am again. So I'm kind of swimming. Remember, like this is almost like normally, like I normally normally would swim, right? And you can see that there's more of a water-like effect here, right? And I'm I'm moving because you know I'm actually on uh, on ground. I could add buoyancy when I'm in the water, and all this kind of stuff as well. But as I go really deep, like this little drop down here, um, I could add a different effect when I'm inside the water by adding a volume. So right now my shape of my water um, is a, a plane. I could make it a box, right? And if I made it a box, the box would be have thickness and everything else. I could give it so that the water effect is throughout the entire box that's thick as opposed to just a plane, depending on what I want. Okay, cool. Um, we're close to getting what I want. Um, not exactly as perfect as the first class, but who cares? I mean, it's the idea is that we're gonna make our level that's semi-neat right, um, for what we have. And one of the things we want to add in here is some simple trees. And the way to do that, of course, is to use some of the trees we just imported. I'm just going to get to the same level here so we can start seeing the trees. So I find that um, when we go to the trees, this is the tree one. So look, here's, here's our raise and lower. This is our, um, this is our uh, plant paint height, which we did for everything else. This one here is our smooth height, so we want to smooth things out. Um, this one here is our paint texture, which we've already done a couple times, right? This one here is when we add trees. Now, it says no trees defined. So let's do the same thing. So we'll edit trees. We'll add a tree. And we'll select the tree. So now we'll go into, and I want to select this broadleaf desktop tree, okay? Broadleaf desktop. And when I do that, and I click away, um, I have a tree. I can add the tree. Okay, cool. And if you notice, that tree is there. And I'm going to wait for it to refresh. There it is. But we have some issues. And first of all, let's make this brush way smaller. And also, um, for the other thing, for the for when it comes to trees, the not to just the, the brush, but also the tree size. Notice this, the, the actual tree height is it says random. You can make it so that there's a selection of ranges for randomness, right? And also so that there's random uh, tree rotation and some color variation as well. All kinds of stuff. But if you notice, if I click this area here, right, where I want my first tree, it's going to try and generate a tree. Now, there's some issues, all right? And I want, I want you to see what the issues are. So you tell me what you see as I go into this. So this is a tree. It's a pretty good tree, but the branches kind of look funny, don't they? And there's another tree. Well, the reason for this is because um, it looks like these are um, full of these squares. And that's what they, uh, the branches are. The branches are, you know, they have a branch texture. Just like the trunk has a trunk texture. And by the way, this is made with something called Speed Tree, which is a very popular program for Unity. Uh, for people who use trees, if I go Speed Tree, um, there's different versions of it. There's one for Unreal, um, there's one for Unity, Speed Tree for games, um, and Speed Tree for Unity, right? So again, I could, I could grab one of these. And if you notice, it costs about, uh, I think it's $19 a month, right, to kind of use. A version of it that works uh, with Unity. And what it does, it gives you this modeling uh, software for modeling trees, as well as, uh, you know, uh, using the asset store. So 19 bucks US a month. Or you could alternately go to the asset store, you know, the asset store, and grab some available trees. Now we just got one with the uh, our core assets, because Unity gives us some, some speed tree assets. Here's my Unity asset store. 
And under asset store, if I say, uh, if I just type in speed tree, speed tree, there's all kinds of stuff you can download, different kinds of trees, and they're right here, like ones that are anywhere from 39 or 29 bucks or some free ones, um, you know, all the way up to um, ones that are, um, you know, $129 for a bunch of not a bunch of different trees, like common hook uh, kind of trees or desktop trees pack, you know, for $159. And it gives you like a bunch of pre-made trees that you can use as assets. Okay, so really cool uh, speed tree. Um, it's a very popular program. But we have to fix this because this is using speed tree, but our, our leaves are messed. How does that work? Well, because the speed tree itself is a prefab, right? So let's look at the prefab here. And if I kind of look at um, this thing here, if I look at my, not my water effects, but if I look at environment under speed tree, I see that there's the broadleaf prefab. Underneath the broadleaf prefab, which is right here, I have a bunch of these um, uh, desktop LODs, right? That's what they are. So the LOD zero, if you notice, has a bunch of textures. And some of them are the speed tree textures. Now, the one that's giving us trouble is this facing leaves one. This facing leaves four under the low LOD zero, uh, the first one, right? So let's take a look at this. We change this, the texture type, the shading type, from nature speed tree to, uh, we're going to go to nature and we're going to go to the creator, uh, tree creator leaves. If we go there, notice how our leaves go back to normal. There we are. So this is tree creator leaves. This is good. This is what our tree should look like, right? We move, just moved from our, uh, uh, from LOD zero, we changed from, again, our facing leaves a shader because there's several shaders here from uh, nature speed tree to nature tree uh, creator leaves right that's what we do minor changes okay cool so if you have that same problem okay cool so that we got these trees but imagine if I had to paint trees hold on a second guys to show you the vastness of our of our of our land we'd be painting all night you don't have time for that better to let the, paint, the program paint for us, I always say, right? So how do we do that? Let's first get rid of these trees. And the way we do that is if we go to our terrain and we look at tree, and if I, if I make the, our brush size very big, like this, um, as an example, and if I press shift and click, it gets rid of my trees. So I can get shift and click to remove trees. Okay, cool, let's add trees by clicking this mass place trees option. Right, mass trees, mass place trees. There we go, mass place trees. Hey, it looks like it wants to add 10,000 trees. Do we want to add 10,000 trees to our scene? I don't think so. So let's move this down to like 400. That's more like it. So 400 trees, and let's press enter. Boom. And when I do that in place, pace, place, then I do this. I got this many trees, like this. This is pretty good. It's like a little forest. Take a look. That's pretty good, right? I need to clean these up now because there's way too many trees, and they're all in the wrong places. Like there's trees inside the water, right? So I'm going to use shift and click to get rid of some of these trees, starting with these ones. So I'm going to go shift and click, get rid of these trees. I'm just going to get rid of the ones that are in the water because it doesn't make any sense. And on the mountaintops because that doesn't make any sense. So all these ones here. Easier for me to clean up trees than to add trees by far, right? So just clean these trees up, let that tree up. I just got rid of all the bugs. We don't want that. <laughs> Okay, so all these trees got to be cleaned up, and, but the other trees are all there. And again, um, you can see that what I'm doing is I'm around these areas where the trees don't belong. I want to kind of go in there and try to move some that makes no sense, like especially around here in the mountains. Now, there's going to be trees in the mountains, but just not these trees. Maybe, and we can paint one tree at a time when it comes to those trees. Now, let me go into zoom in here. To really deal with some of these ones because you know what it's one thing to do a mass retreat like that and another one where there's some trees in here that we just got to get rid of like these ones um, so I'm just gonna click this tree again and right click and just get rid of all this okay wrong one there we go so get rid of some of so the first trees don't start to later in and then let's go and lower our brush and get rid of some of the smaller ones even more get rid of some of the smaller ones just target these ones that are really annoying me, right? So again, right here, and again, what I want to do is I want to focus in on the areas where we don't really, trees don't make any sense, like any anywhere in here, in this line here. So let's just make a tree and shift click, just to get rid of some of these ones. So I'm getting rid of the trees, and 
Now, you notice that, that the trees, if we're in the, in the actual tree level, looks like this. That's pretty good. So I'm going to kind of go in here and make sure that there's no other trees that, um, that are kind of impacting us, like this one. This is a kind of another area. Oops. Try trees that are, um, you know, areas that we don't want to get rid of. Oops. And pull back. That's pretty good. Okay. So let's, let's test this out now. Uh, we've added our trees. I'll save my scene. And I'll press play, and let's see what the trees look like as I move forward. Now, we had a kind of a problem with this earlier today, but let's see if I can if I fix this problem. So I run to the trees. Run! And if you notice how long it takes for me to run to these trees, like a long time. Okay, cool. So I moved in here, and now I'm in the trees. And, you know, these are pretty massive trees we got here, right? And I could lower them by changing the variation in levels, but this is pretty good. Like we, you know, we got some really cool cover. Again, if I fire at a tree, I still get the same effect. I need to fix that, right? But I need some really cool, I've got some really cool trees. And if you look at them, the details are really kind of cool. And if I look underneath the roots, if I was actually to uh, look at the trees themselves by, you know, focusing on my player. So let's go back to my my player itself himself and kind of focus in on them. There he is. And I'm going to move around so you can see what the player is looking at here. Here's a tree. If I actually was to go underneath the level, right, so just like by pressing this and pressing up, you can see that underneath the level, my trees actually have roots. See? So you can actually see the roots in the, in the, in the level. Um, they're actually in the tree as opposed to uh, yeah. So it's actually really realistic what you can do with trees. Yeah. So we have it. So here's here's what we have today. Um, as of as now, we've got our train. We've got our um, highs and lows. We painted some some. We painted our textures, right? Which is kind of cool. We've created our water effect. So we have a little bit of a lake, right? And we've made our trees, right? One thing we're missing is still kind of wind effects. And we want to kind of paint some other trees. We want to have maybe a hero tree, some much larger tree. We want to make later on. Uh, uh, next day, and we also want to look and see if we can put together some other kind of trees, like coniferous trees, on the on the mountain tops, right? Because I think that's where some conifers belong. We can also intersperse the conifers, right, along with the other ones by actually adding another massive amount of trees and just erasing them again, right? Which is not a bad thing, right? Because it'll it'll, add, it'll kind of add the trees in here. So this is a pretty good little effect, right? So any questions as to what we did today? Right? Lots of little things. We're making our next level. This is level two. And next day, like I said, I want to make a transition between level one and level two and how to get to level two. We're keeping our little maze tile here in order for us to visit the transition. We're going to connect to this maze tile, and then from there, we're going to make our way into this larger area, almost like we made it out of the maze. Okay, any questions? That's it for me today, guys. We'll see you tom uh, tomorrow, right? I'll see you guys tomorrow at 4.30, and then we'll continue this little demo. Um, so, do you have to use a maze tile? You do not. You make it your own.